Today on Crazy Performance Repair, we are installing a Trunnion kit in a LS-based engine, particularly a LS2. We are going to show you the proper techniques and tools needed to do so. Alright, so you can see I have some components laying here. This particular car is getting a full BTR kit upgrade along with the Trunnion upgrade. Now this Trunnion upgrade is from CHE. Uh, they make valve train components obviously. And this is probably the best kit I've seen to date. Uh, there's other kits available, but I'll explain why this one is so good in just a second. But I also have here the various tools you're gonna need to do this job. Uh, now, these are just sockets. These are, I'm basically doing the bare minimum, what you can get by with if you're doing it at home, say you don't have a really large bench vise or a hydraulic press, things of that nature. That way you can do it yourself at home. It is a affordable upgrade and it's a well worthwhile upgrade. And I'll explain why as soon as we get one of those apart. All right, here is the Trunnion upgrade. Now, this style of Trunnion upgrade is by far the best to go with. Try and avoid the bearing style. There has been issues in the past where the needle bearings cause pitting on various brands. I'm not going to get into that. But you can see there is a shaft here, just like the stock ones. There's a shaft going through those. You'll see that in a minute as well. Uh, there's also these brass bushings. Uh, this kit, the reason I say this is the best by far, is the last bushing kit style I did, I had to press this into the trunnion. These ones actually oil the outside of this, so this is a machined fit to fit nice on there without being a press fit. And then the inside is a machine fit for this part of it. So it's like having a double bearing kind of a surface thing going on. So you have lubrication between the inside of this and the outside of that the outside of this and the inside of that. So you have extra slipperiness going on, I guess we'll call it. Uh, with that, let's go ahead and start installing that. And again, I highly recommend a kit like this, even for stock vehicles, because those needles that are in here, if you were to have one of these fails, those needles go down into your motor. They end up in the bottom of the motor. It's not likely that they'll land in a place to cause damage, but if it does, you could imagine how much damage it would do. Okay, so I have here a very large iron block. You could use the top of a bench vise, even a lighter weight bench vise, or the floor with something on top of it that's smooth if you absolutely need to. Perhaps something like this sitting on your concrete floor. Just something to keep it clean because you don't want to be pounding on concrete. I would hate to get dust and dirt in there. So here are my sockets. Let's go ahead and get started with one of these. You have to obviously pull it off of there. Pull the bolt out, and then we have to get this out of here. Now this is just pressed in, is all it is. I have a socket here that is big enough that it can slide into there. And then I have a socket here that is small enough that it can go inside of the pressed in area. So I'm gonna set this up here. Give it a few nice hits. It all comes apart nice and easy. And now look at this design. You can see it's it's a half moon deal. And it literally has like, you know, only X number of movement. And the other half is useless. It doesn't have any pressure against it. So it's, it, I don't know, it's not a very good design. It's pretty poor quality design. They're trying to save money, I believe, is why they cut that. I'm not sure. But really hairy, crummy design. Here are those needles that cause the havoc on your motor if they get in there. Could potentially cause havoc. They might just follow the bottom and be fine too, but they could potentially cause havoc. So we're going to get rid of that. Now we have this guy here. And in order to put these in, we need the bushings. We obviously need the shaft itself. And then also in the kit is this little baggie. This little baggie has snap rings. All right, so you can see I have all the snap rings here. I have a snap ring pliers. And now I am to the point where I don't need any of these for this part of it. I'll set those aside. This guy here has to go in here. But before I do that, I need to apply some kind of lubricant. 
Now you could just use like a thick motor oil or, or a light grease or something. I'm actually going to use this assembly lube that I have for when I build motors. And I don't need very much. I'm just gonna get a little bit of a film on my hand. Just put a real thin amount on the inside of each side of this. And then a little bit on here. Again, it's not a competition to see how much you can get on there. You just need a little bit. We are going to slide into one side here. And we're going to take this guy and we are going to slide it into the other side there. Then this final one on like that. Now we need to take the snap ring players, take said snap ring. Apply the snap ring to one side, then we go to the other side. With another snap ring. And just like that. Now, I'm anal about things. Oops. And in fact, so anal that I'm going to correct this here. That I would like to have the snap ring personally up facing this. Both snap rings so they're facing the same direction. It probably doesn't matter whatsoever. In fact, we'll go ahead and look. Yeah, you can see it clears the bottom. Just my personal thing that I do. I don't know. It's really not important. But this is a completed rocker now. It is ready to have this bolt set in there, put back on there, torqued down, and good to go. So there you have it. There is a trunnion upgrade. Nice, simple, easy, quick. Not very hard to do. And uh, with that, like, share, subscribe. I hope to see you on another video. Thanks for watching.